we have a point, and we have another line, and we like to come up with two things. Um, the equation of the line that goes through the point that is parallel to this given line. And then after that, we want to do it all over again for the line that is perpendicular to that given line. So this line here, y minus 2x equals negative 1. That's the given line in 85. Our job in part A is to find the equation of the line that is parallel to that line and goes through the point 6, 2. So it goes through 6, 2. X is 6, Y is 2. And it's parallel to um, and is parallel to that line. Y minus 2X equals negative 1. What did we learn about parallel lines last class? They have the same slope. Parallel lines have the same <coughs> slope. So what, uh, if we can find the slope of that line, then we just use it as the slope of our line. It's not ready for us to read it off right away and tell what the slope is because it's not like an mx plus b form. But if we just shift the, the x term over, we have y equals mx plus b. Move it over by adding it. Now we're in mx plus b form. Add 2x to both sides. So the slope of that line is what's in front of the x. Two. Our slope? Two. <laughs> Same slope. What we do with them is up to us, whether you choose to do point slope or slope intercept, totally up to you. Since we have a point and a slope, let's use point slope. Y minus Y1 is M times the quantity X minus X1. Y minus 2 is 2 times x minus 6. And technically we're done there. They didn't say how they want the line to be represented. They didn't tell us the form that we want if they want it. This is the point slope form. And uh, technically we, we're done there. In, on an exam or in the homework, they might not want it in that form. They might want it in a different form. They might want y equals mx plus b. And so we distribute this 2 across, and we shift this 2 over to the other side. y minus 2 is 2x minus 12. Add the 2 over, and then you're done. 2x minus 10. That's the parallel line. B is uh, perpendicular to the given line. It goes through that same point. So we know this line has a slope of 2. What do we learn about perpendicular lines? Negative, in, negative reciprocal. So if your slope is 2, your perpendicular slope is <coughs> negative 1 half. Yeah. 
So we're ready then to do the same thing. Y minus Y1 is M times X minus X1. Technically we're done, but it's to put into the right kind of MX plus B for distribute and just add that over. Y minus 2 is negative half X plus 3. And then add 2 to both sides. Negative half X plus 5. Okay, so that's it then, um, it's a good review of last time, that's what we did pretty much, uh, talked about lines and how to find their equations and slopes, and uh, that was the last lecture. Questions? Yeah, it's not 2, 3, it's just 2, 4. So, um, in 2, 4, we talk about what a function is, the formal definition. And uh, and uh, and then we do we do a bunch of uh, kind of uh, finding the domain, finding the range, uh, telling whether or not we have a function, uh, evaluating the function, maybe even graphing a function. So here is the formal mathematical definition. This is section uh, two point four. In the, uh, in the physical text. Sorry, 1.4. 2.4 in the online text. Okay. Yeah, that 4% point is only good if you stay the whole time. <laughs> like I just lost 4% off this test. Must have been important. Yeah. Alright, so here's what a function is. Um, there's a set A and there's a set B. Okay. The set A is the domain. The set B is the range. Okay. Domain goes with the word inputs. Range goes with the word outputs. So I have this set A, this set B. B is all of my input. I'm sorry, A is all of my inputs. B is all of my outputs. And A is called the domain. B is called the range. And a function is a rule that will assign to each element in A, the domain, exactly one element in the range B. So I got X's over here. I got a bunch of them. Exactly 